I had a very close call with a small battery charger in a vehicle when one of my friends walked past it, kicked the extension cord, and the battery charger is small enough and light enough it came flying out almost hit another vehicle. Wouldn't be cool in this situation. So I thought I'm going to change things up. Not only have something larger so I can't lose it, but I also have issues of being very messy. I'll work out here until your mom tells me I have to come home. Then I go and leave that mess. You can see it back there. That's pretty standard here. I try to keep most things clean. Anything horizontal, I tend to just pack up and it's bad. So this dude here sits on the floor. I don't have as much of an issue with floor space. I can find it. I don't have to search through all my cabinets. Also, I can sit this on the ground, run cables up into something. Right now it's hooked up to a tractor, but I can run it up into a Jeep. I can run it up to a truck. I can put it on a lawnmower and I don't have to find a space to teeter totter some small piece of electronics that's going to charge the battery. Now this is only going to be good for lead acid AGM or gel batteries so if you're looking at anything lithium or anything like that not it. This is pretty cool although it's a little bit more lightweight than some of the things I've seen in the past but basically let's come in plug this in. I'll show you what it's going to do for our tractor, which needs a little bit of a boost right now. So as you can read, this is a 200 amp engine start, 40 amp charger, 3 amp maintainer. So basically we can use this as a battery tender. We can hook it up in start vehicles. We can use it as just a normal charger and it's going to work really well for those large batteries or dual battery vehicles. So we can put some serious power in there and get things charged. Right now it's showing us voltage and it's also showing us that we have a wet or a lead acid battery inside. It's showing us a, the fuel gauge here. We are two of the three bars. Eventually here it's going to get bored and say I need to charge this battery and it'll just kick on. And once it does you'll hear kind of a fan going and it'll start to show us not the voltage, the amps that's going in. Now we could speed that process up by simply pushing charge or if we wanted to do the engine start at this point or we could recondition the battery if we wanted to or we can change the battery type if we didn't pick up what type correctly. Also, we have an alternator test in here. But as you can see, it just sat around long enough and said, hey, I'll start charging. So we are currently at six amps, moving around plus or minus. There's a fan in the side that is running air through, keeping this charger cool. But I think there's some pretty cool stuff that happens inside of this. So let's kind of test some of the things out. We're on an old tractor, let's do an alternator test. So we have a caution signal here, most likely because we were in something else first. But let's hit the alternator test at this point when it's running, it's blinking, checking stuff out. Then says, all good. So obviously we have some power going back to the battery, which is excellent. So the battery on this tractor is mediocre. It's, it'll start it, but it doesn't start it quickly. It did here, which is good. You can see we're still at 4.8 amps and that's really coming down from where it was, which is good. It means we're gonna get a good charge into this pretty small battery that's in there, 400 cold cranking amps. So it's just a little guy. If we wanted to do an engine start, we could flop over here pretty, it's just, this is simple. You just push buttons. It's gonna tell you how many amps it's putting in. Obviously, as the battery starts to draw, this could go up to 200 amps. And then if we wanted to recondition the battery, it would go through and do all that also. Battery chargers should be simple, and this one definitely is. Here's one of the big reasons I love this. I can have this on the ground. I have a decent amount of cable going up into the engine bay. It can sit here and people can see it, but I also don't have stuff sitting up in there. That's huge to me. Now I have an Optima battery in this Jeep. It's about four years old. No bueno, not happy. I've not had good luck with Optima batteries lately. Not sure why. It's showing 11.8 volts. Here's some proof that she's dead. Nada. But if we go to the engine start mode, it's gonna give us a countdown. It's gonna show us a blinking engine, shows us connected. It's 
pushing some charge into the battery. It's going to count down from 24 seconds and then it's going to get to zero and it will give us an audible beep. That beep says we can start the engine. Still won't do it. We have this connected well and just to show you that this Jeep will start, I usually start it once in a while with this uh, NOCO Genius, it's a GB70. Let's just hook that up and show you it'll start. Disappointing that this will not start our Jeep, but yet a small battery cell will. That sucks. I didn't really buy it for starting vehicles. I'm still happy to have something that I can roll around on the floor and put next vehicles. But if I had one more thing that kind of irks me on this is this is going to be sitting next to a vehicle. And I know a lot of you guys have garages maybe that are pretty tight, but this is kind of a shop thing, maybe not a small garage thing. So I have a, let's say seven foot long cord here. And that's it. So for most shop uses, you're going to end up adding an extension cord to this. And while we do have the room here to add it and just put it in, it kind of bums me out a little bit that this doesn't come with at least like 15 foot of cord. That can't cost that much to add. And I think that would be huge because that's what most people are going to do with this. Have a shop, use it for different situations. Car's not going to be right next to a plug. I mean, realistically here you have six and a half feet on your battery cables, which are going to be from the ground up into a car and then seven feet to a plug. Rare that I think that's going to happen. Going to need an extension cord. So that to kind of bum me out slightly. I was expecting a little bit longer. Other than that, the fact that this sits on the floor, moves around, looks pretty, uh, looks shouldn't matter, right? But at the same point, you're in a shop, you wanna see something that looks decent. It's not the old battery chargers that you would click, I mean, that we had in the farm. It just isn't there, much lighter, much less to it and obviously doesn't have the power that those things did. I mean, we used to start large diesel tractors with them in no issue. This didn't start a four liter six cylinder motor. Because it couldn't start that engine doesn't mean it doesn't have its place in our shop. I still like the fact that it'll do very simple items and it's easy to use. LED screen tells me exactly what's going on. And again, I come back to this is what I was looking for, even though it doesn't have the full starting capability that I was expecting. Either here nor there. I'm very interested in hearing your comments on this model and I'll have that in the description along with a link of where I purchased it from. Just love to hear what you have to say. Leave that down below. As always, thank you for watching the video. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.